Outer Wilds is one of the finest examples of what I would call a genre-defining work, a story that could not be told in any other way. The story is not just made better by being interactive, it exists because it is interactive. A good example of a recent genre-defining game is what became of Edith Finch. As Edith, you explore your old family home, discovering along the way the fates of your various family members. The stories of each member of the Finch family are made so much more impactful because each one is being played through by you. You are each person. Now some would dismiss games like this as a walking simulator. It's an almost insulting term designed to imply that if a game doesn't have a gun or a sword, it's somehow not a game. Outer Wilds contains nothing resembling a sword. And the closest thing to a gun is the remote camera drone that you carry around with you, but it's definitely a game. It's a relatively new type of game, and I've heard the term information game thrown around. Um, I think that's quite appropriate. Perhaps a very well-known example of this genre is Her Story, a game about trawling through old videos about a murder case, trying to work out the truth by finding keywords within the interview. In games like this, the only thing that stops you from skipping straight to the end is the knowledge that you yourself possess. These aren't games about leveling up a character or reaching a final boss, they're about leveling up your brain. In a miniature solar system, on a pocket-sized planet, there's a tiny valley in which your entire species lives. You are the next in line to become an astronaut, to make your way into the stars, explore the nearby planets, and the ruins left behind by a long dead alien race. Eventually, you may find out who they were, what they were up to, and perhaps most importantly, where they went. So, after a brief tutorial, it's time for liftoff. Now this really is a solar system in miniature. It only takes a minute or two to cross the entire span, and it's a regular occurrence to find yourself smacked off course by a rogue moon. However, despite the fact that each planet can be entirely circumnavigated in seconds, each is wildly different and a complete joy to explore. The ship mechanics are simple but elegant. Your first steps into space will be clumsy and awkward, but you'll soon get the hang of it, even if you do sometimes forget to put your spacesuit on before exiting the ship. The game lies in exploring these planets, looking for clues about what happened here, and then the theories that you create for yourself, the expeditions that you plan, and the links that you make between discoveries. Now your ship's computer will keep track of it all, in a screen that I absolutely cannot show you because it would just tell you the entire plot of the game. Along the way you'll jump to plenty of conclusions, and while I can spoil quite a lot about the story here, I cannot possibly spoil the emotional journey that you'll go on, because that is entirely yours. Now I'm going to go into a lot of detail in this video, and ultimately I'm going to spoil quite a lot of what this game has to offer and what makes Outer Wilds so special. I've deliberately not shown very much detail in the footage so far, because a huge part of what makes this game so great is in the discovery of finding out the idiosyncrasies of each planet, diving deep to locate its secrets, the mechanics by which each world operates, and to have that ruined would be to ruin a lot of the discovery for you. Even the overall structure of the game could be considered a spoiler. So if what I've said here interests you and you want to try out the game, go ahead, pause the video here, stick me in your watch later list, Come back when you're ready, I'll be waiting for you. If you are playing the game but you haven't finished it, I will discuss a little of end game content but not until the end of the video and I'll make it very clear when I'm about to do that. I'm gonna stay away from deeper story elements for just a little bit longer, but I am gonna get into the meat of the structure of the game now. Outer Wilds, like the classic Groundhog Day, the more recent Russian Doll, and that episode of every sci-fi TV series ever, is a time loop game. Outer Wilds sees you exploring the same 20 odd minute chunk of time again and again and again. And this very simple trick allows the developers to fill every inch of that solar system and every second 
of that 22 minutes with something to explore. Most planets that you can visit are undergoing some kind of change. Brittle Hollow, for example, is a planet undergoing quite severe volcanic restructuring. While the Ash Twin and the Ember Twin perform their own strange dance. One gently bleeding sand onto the other. Whether you visit them at the beginning of the cycle, or the end of the cycle, or halfway through, things will be very different and you'll have a different experience. You'll be able to access different areas, you'll be able to encounter and discover new and different things depending on when you choose to visit a particular location. The freeform structure allows you to take the game very much at your own pace. So, you could decide to keep returning to the same planet to find out everything you possibly can before moving on. Or, you may choose to jet somewhere else every loop and explore the wider world before digging in. And the game does very well to give the player the choice and the space to make those decisions. As well as places to demonstrate what you've learned in other locations. It may be that in visiting one world you find a clue that leads you to a better understanding of something that you've seen somewhere else, perhaps unlocking an extra area you didn't think you were able to access, or even just a piece of knowledge that you didn't quite understand, but now you have the context for. It's easy to find yourself exploring the caverns, exploring the caves, reading, translating, and you realize that the way that you entered isn't available anymore. You've been trapped in. And you have maybe a minute, two minutes, where all you can really do is just sort of wait to suffocate. The protagonist of this game, the astronaut that you control, is nameless. But I think they might be one of the bravest video game protagonists that I've encountered in quite a while. And so we come to the reason then for the time loop. Last jumping off point if you don't want spoilers. Now, there's something about the final moments of each loop. As the music swells, you stop what you're doing, you can't help it. If you're on the surface or in space, your eyes are drawn towards the sun as it grows larger, redder, before it reaches some cosmic tipping point and bursts. You watch as your entire solar system is engulfed. First the inner planets, then the outer. Before long, your home planet of Timber Hearth is nothing but ash. Briefly, you are the last member of your race. And then... Maybe it's something to do with the idea of this unknowingly doomed planet repeatedly sending out their one and only astronaut. He, she keeps going in the desperate hope of finding some way out of this predicament. But they remember every single attempt, yet they're still forced to watch the world burn every 20 minutes. This is only more tragic when you consider the people themselves, the explorers, the astronauts, the people of Timber Hearth. They are adorable. They explore space just because they want to. They have no ulterior motive. Even those who have already been sent into space are happy to be there. You'll always find them sitting, jamming on an instrument, just watching the world go by. If you like, you can park up alongside them, spend a few minutes chatting, roast a few marshmallows, and just listen to the music. For a game with 
such a strict time limit. Outer Wilds seems to revel in the opportunity for moments of reflection like this. Moments where you can sit and watch and think. I finished the game a long time ago, but I still find myself going back just to be in some of these places. It's the closest I've seen in gaming or interactive fiction to that romantic ideal of the sublime, if you want to get literary about it. The idea that there's this mighty, unknowable thing over which you have no control, and of which you are one small, insignificant part. But at the start of each loop, there's a blue flash in the sky, right over the surface of the planet that you will find is called Giant's Deep. If you're quick, you can spot something leaving the planet. And if you're very quick, you can follow it. So what leaves Giant's Deep is a probe, which you will know if you've explored the planet and the machinery surrounding it. And if it's traveling on the right angle, and if you're quick, and if you're able to get your bearings quickly enough, you can follow that probe and you can match speeds with it and follow it to its destination. Now, if you're far enough along in the game, you will know that this probe cannot possibly find that which it is looking for. And it's quite boring, actually. You can jump out, you can have a look at the probe, you can explore a little around it, but there's no way in, there's nothing to interact with. It doesn't do anything apart from just gently spin. And it's there without distraction and without anything else to get in the way that you notice, maybe for the first time, the sky. Now, yes, we know that at the end of this 22 minute loop, your sun will go supernova, but what you may not have noticed is that so is every other sun. It was here that I first realized this wasn't going to be as simple as solving the problem threatening my solar system. What I was witnessing was the end of the universe. Outer Wilds began as a student project, released in Alpha way back in the depths of 2012. I first wrote about it at the end of 2013, uh, when I named it one of my games of the year. Even then, it was incredible, and it drew a fair bit of media attention. Now, graphically speaking, the original art was not quite up to the standards of the 2019 version, but the themes, the atmosphere, the emotional ambiance, that's all present. Since then, of course, it's clear to see where the work has gone to make this something truly stunning. But the heart of the game really hasn't changed that much. I went back and forth on whether I was going to talk about the ending in detail or not. Outer Wilds does have an ending. There is a moment where the credits roll, and the story, such as it is, you could say is completed. That's all I'll say, I think, because the ending is wonderful. It brings together the plot threads into something extremely satisfying. But it's one of those very intense, very emotional moments, and I don't want to be responsible for taking that away from anybody who's got this far into the video. And besides, I don't really think that's the point of Outer Wilds. If this game has anything to say, it's that the journey is far more important than the destination. And the things we learn along the way are what make us the person that we are when we get there. Now, I do call myself a few things, and one of those things is a critic. So I suppose I probably should come up with some criticism. Now, towards the end of the game, there was one moment that I found absolutely impossible. A particular piece of the puzzle to reach a certain location that I just could not click with. 
I ended up having to Google the solution. And without spoiling what this actually is, it turns out that a piece of advice that I had read earlier in the game, um, I was interpreting it in the wrong way, or perhaps it was written in a way to make me think I had to do something that I didn't need to do. And that was stopping me from accessing somewhere that I needed to reach. Nevertheless, Outer Wilds is probably going to be my game of the year. It's certainly amongst the games of the decade. It's a gorgeous, enthralling experience that never outstays its welcome, and will always reward and surprise the player who's willing to put in the time to explore its depths. The issues that I encountered, what little there were, are far more my fault than the game's. After all, if the game takes place entirely in the mind, isn't that mind at least somewhat to blame for its own failures? Outer Wilds is a game about exploration. It's a game about hope, and pushing on in the face of insurmountable odds. It's a game about the spirit of adventure itself. It's also a game about roasting a marshmallow on the moon, while the universe gently spins itself to death. So this was something a little different for the channel. It's been a while in the making, but I hope you enjoyed it. I'd like to say a huge extra special thanks to Andrew Pralo, the game's composer, for not only allowing me to make use of the game's amazing soundtrack within this video, but also for sending me over a gigabyte of high quality audio samples to use just for this purpose. So Andrew, thank you very much, and I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please hit the like button to let me know. If you're a fan of my particular brand of nerdy stuff, whether it be D&D, gaming, or anything else, hit the subscribe button and you can follow me on this journey. Uh, if you want to be notified every time a new video comes up, you can hit the notification bell and that'll come up. Mostly, I'd love to hear about your own experiences with this incredible game. Where did you go first? What did you get stuck on? What did you think was going on that later turned out to be inaccurate? So please, please do leave me a comment. Love to read them. More content coming soon, but until then, I'll see you later.